Shalom, I'm John Carney Roth, and you're tuning in to Something to Think About today, and I appreciate you uh, tuning in. And I want to talk about something today that hopefully you will have something to think about, to really examine yourself in the faith. And today's subject is moral self-exaltation, a self-proclamation or self-proclaimed superior moral virtue construct. And you may be saying, what in the world are you talking about? I'll get into that in a second, but what I would like to do is touch on just for a moment how I came with this message this week that Yahweh has given to me. I was talking with my brother in this ministry, Anthony Hill, and he brought up a subject that was really very interesting that we had gotten into, and it was all about how the moral structure of this world has changed now, and we like to blame our religious leaders and other political people and corporations for all the evil that's going on with them. And it's not my intent to uh, annul any of that. They own what they are doing. But I think oftentimes we, we are looking at this as the culprit, as the one that's responsible for all our, our ill will in this world and our woes that we're going through, such as this pandemic we just went through and all the oppression around the world that's gone on through these governments. And I don't think we have really even stopped to ask ourselves, why is this even happening? Well, I want to touch into that just a little bit today. Uh, I don't have a lot of time, but basically to sum it up, what I do want to state from the front is, is that the reason why we have tyrannical leaders and oppressive governments and so forth is because Yahshua in the scriptures has uh, told us that the reason why we have these authorities over us is because of our rebellious nature. And so that's why we have these problems. And so what I'm seeing, at least in this country and in the United States, is that we are losing our liberties and everything is going downhill very quickly. And it, people are not waking up to their moral structure. And if everybody was doing morally what they're supposed to be doing, according to Yahshua, the Messiah, we wouldn't be having these kinds of tyrannical governments that we're having today and all the other oppressions and calamities and pandemics and all this stuff. So the, the absence of morality creates a vacuum in which darkness comes in and it's meant to be a teacher to correct us so that we can move in the right direction. So thus the title today about moral self-exaltation. And what I want to convey today is that what we are doing is we're exalting ourselves in our own form of morality. And so in this discussion with my, uh, my brother, Anthony Hill, we had concluded that religion, particularly in the discussion we had within Christianity, and he had cited some examples of major uh, religious leaders in this movement, have condoned sin, literally condoned sin. They won't, they won't uh, denounce sin that's going on in their congregations and so forth. And so we had concluded that the morality is being changed where people are being taught now to accept a new form of morality. So this is the problem that we have here today. So what I want to talk about is the superior moral virtual construct and what the definition is. And the definition is an idea or theory containing various conceptual ideas from religion in this particular case and that are subject and not based on of subjective and are not based on empirical evidence. Okay, you may be asking, well, John, what is empirical evidence? Okay, well, empirical evidence is information acquired by observation or experimentation. So self-proclaimed moral virtue construct is basically accepted without being tested. And so what am I saying? What I'm saying is that in Christianity, we're told that you don't need to keep the commandments. And yet, so few people I meet that are Christian sit down and actually test that theory. So what happens is that becomes the new superior moral virtue construct. And, and what it's doing is it's causing people to move further and further away from morality, even though they think they're moral. And they think that what they're doing in this new construct is correct and it's righteous. Indeed, it's not. Because if it was, we actually be seeing a more uh, blessed world that we're living. Instead, what we're doing is we're spiraling out of control. So it's my goal today is to help you 
to stop and think for a moment, have I adopted a moral self-exaltation, a self-proclaimed superior moral virtue construct in my own life about what I think is right and wrong according to biblical concepts? Well, if it's a self uh, proclaim exaltation, then it doesn't come from Scripture, or it might be a conglomeration of stuff that's in Scripture, as well as your own personal beliefs about what you feel comfortable about what is okay and what is not okay. So, what I want to talk about for a moment here is, in one of the videos I did in the Epistle of John series, I had talked about the three levels of righteousness that human beings can operate in. And so the first one on the first level, which is the most primitive level, I'll say, is the human standard. In other words, we decide for ourselves what is right and wrong on a human level. Then we get into the second level, which is the worldly religious doctrines made by men. Now that is a conglomeration or infusion of both uh, religious doctrine and our own personal beliefs as we feel comfortable or uncomfortable about what that is, and then we reformulate it into what we want, and that becomes our own doctrine and our own level of self-righteousness. But what I want to talk about now is the third level, and that third level is the biblical definition of righteousness, which annuls the first two. Can you take a moment, friends, and examine yourself? and be honest with yourself and say to yourself, you know what, I have been guilty of those first two, the human standard and the mixing of religious dogma with my own personal opinion about these things, and that has been what I have been living my life by. But it's not giving me what I really want. So what I'm hoping is, is that if you are going to be honest with yourself, and you're not going to shut off this video at this time, and you're going to hear this through, that you will say that I need to come up to that highest, most archetypical type of righteousness, which is the biblical definition of righteousness. So I want to read real quick to you something in John chapter 15, verse 9 through 11, and this is what Yahshua has to say. He says, as the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. So clearly the Father is, is, is um, demonstrating a kind of love to his Son that his Son is now passing on to us. Now, here's the kicker. Here's the rub. If you keep as to guard from loss or injury my commandments as an authoritative prescription... You will abide in a state of relaxation and expectancy in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in a state of relaxation and expectancy in His love. See, brethren, I don't think we, we really understand a lot of what Yahshua is saying because He's saying that if you want to abide in His love, which is the same love the Father has given to him, you have to keep the commandments. And not just keep them, but you have to guard them from loss or injury, because the devil's going to try to take them away. And he's using religion in this modern day to redefine what the moral virtue construct is, is supposed to be. He wants to alter it and take you into a curse by not having the law help you to understand what sin is and to define what sin is in your life so you can eradicate it from your life. You don't need to live by that curse. But in the Christian world, we're told that to keep the commandments is to be under a curse. How can you be under a curse if you don't commit adultery? How can you be under a curse if you don't dishonor your mother and father? How can you be under a curse if you don't lie? How can you be under a curse if you don't steal? Am I making my point? This is elementary, people. This is very simple. But yet we are being told this is the new form of morality today, and we're giving people a license to come into the kingdom of Yahweh, and no matter what state you're in, you're coming in, and if that's the way you stay, you will get into the kingdom in that manner. That is not scriptural, and that is not an ideology we should be accepting. And so these commandments that Yahshua gave us, and the one he gave to Israel on Mount Horeb is the same ones that 
the Father gave to him. This is what he's saying, friends. He says, just as I have kept my Father's commandments. He wants us to keep those same commandments. He got them from the Father. So it originates from him. So if you're going to reject those commandments, there's no way on this earth you're going to be able to abide in his love. Then he sums it up by saying, These things I have spoken to you that my joy of calm delight and cheerfulness may remain in you, that your joy may be full, that is supplied to perfection. Can you honestly say that you have this joy at that level? Or do you have a lot of turmoil going on in your life and you can't define or understand where it's coming from? Perhaps because you're breaking the commandments in some fashion, you have given a legal right to unclean spirits to come into your life and turn that part of your life upside down. And you'll never get an answer to it until you come out of that sin, out of that transgression. You need that level of righteousness in order to walk in that kind of perfection of joy and happiness and cheerfulness. So a refusal to abide in his commandments means contrary you don't abide in his love it's a very simple thing to understand it's not complicated if you do one thing you get this effect if you do the opposite you get the opposite effect so what is it then it becomes self-love self-gratification thus this self-imposed moral virtue construct that you've created in your life that is actually taking you further away from the Messiah rather than moving you towards. You're either moving towards or you're moving away from in this life in just about anything. So this is no different. The time is up. It, we've got to repent. This world is getting crazier and crazier. The evil and the wicked are continuing to do more wickedness than they've ever done before. And if we don't want to get caught up in all this, we need to preserve our own souls. Let's go into Acts chapter 17, verse 30 through 31 uh, very quickly. It says in verse 30, Truly, these times of ignorance by lack of information from Elohim overlooked without punishment but now commands with a declared message to all men, that includes you, to all men everywhere universally to think differently morally with a feeling of guilt. Do you feel guilty that you are sinning? Do you feel guilty you are violating, let's just say the Ten Commandments to keep it simple. Do you really feel that? If you don't, then your conscience is seared with a hard iron and you're on your way to the lake of fire. <laughs> you're not going to get out of that barring Yahweh directly coming down and opening up your mind and removing that stronghold out of your life. Other than that, you've got nothing else to live for. This is a pretty dire warning. But these are uh, the words that we're being given here in the book of Acts. Then it goes on verse 31, because he has appointed a day on which he will judge by deciding judicially to punish the world in righteousness according to his standards, which is the commandments, by man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of moral conviction from the truth of this to all by raising him from the dead. So a word to the wise is sufficient. He used to wink at sin, but he doesn't wink anymore. That means the law is still in force. It is still in force. Don't let these religious leaders tell you that the commandments have been done away. They have not been done away. They're not, they, they're still in force. The fact that you have adversity going on in your life that comes from violating these commandments is self-evident. It is self-evident. It doesn't take a genius to figure it out. But these strongholds that we're being given by these religious leaders, we need to come out of these strongholds. They've already sold their soul into this doctrine. Don't, don't take it, friends. Don't take it. Now, let's go into Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 through 23. This is about the, the time of the second resurrection, which is the great white throne judgment period. I'm not going to get into all that, do, uh, that, uh, that dogma for that, but I'm just stating the time and what Yahshua is saying in which he's going to be talking to these people. He says, not everyone who says to me, Master, Master, shall enter the kingdom that rules with royalty of heaven. But he who does by not transgressing the law or the commandments, 
the will and purpose of my Father in heaven. The commandments are the purpose of the Father in heaven. Why is it we can't get this? And yet religious leaders are telling you, you need to do away with that stuff. You're going to come under bondage. But he's saying that's the will of the Father. Do we not read Yahshua's words? Yahshua said to the Jews of his day, he says, if you don't believe Moses' words, how are you going to believe my words? Moses said the same thing. So in verse 22, it says, many will say to me in that day, the one I had talked about at the uh, great white throne judgment period, master, master, have we not prophesied, speak under divine inspiration in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders with miraculous powers in your name, and get this rub in what he summarizes. He says, and then I, at that time, I will declare with a confession to them, I never at any time knew you and go away from me, you who practice and minister as an occupational work of lawlessness, which is against Torah law, which is the commandments. Now, how more plain can those words be from the very Messiah himself who is telling us these are his words coming from the Father. The Father commanded him to say this to us so that we can get instruction in righteousness. This is the true virtual moral construct that was established from the beginning that John talked about, that we need to return back to the first love. This is the first love, friends. When are we going to piece this stuff together and understand it? It's not complicated. It's just that we've been deluded by religious leaders into this new moral construct of virtual law that they're establishing, which is anti-law. It is lawlessness. They are doing the work of what the beast is going to be compelling humans on this earth to be doing in the end times. So what is the real super moral construct? A refusal to abide in his commandments. Do not by abide in his love. If you reject his commandments, you're not in his love. It's self-love, as I said from the beginning. The time is up. We must repent. We must repent. Change your moral virtue from yours to his. That is the original moral virtuous construct. I hope this gives you something to think about before it's too late for you. It's not too late. You can still change the way you think. You can still walk by faith in these words. That These are not my words. These are his words. So in Yahshua's great and mighty name, this is something to think about. So until the next time, shalom.